into that. Right now, let's go and uh, let's go talk to Ricky Vanesco. All right, and joining us now from the complex there in Arizona. Uh, a lot of you guys know this name, and he has been on rehab now for a little over a year. It's Ricky Vanasco. We talked to him last year. Uh, he came on the show be before the injury. Ricky, what's up, bud? Not a whole lot, man. Just itching to get get a hitter in the box at this point. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, where? So where where are you? Where are you in the rehab process? I, I talked to Willie Calhoun a couple weeks ago. He said he stepped in and tracked against you and said you were throwing fastballs and changeups. Or where are you at now? Um, so I actually just got done with my rehab two Thursdays ago, and then I threw my first live BP this week, and then I have another one tomorrow. So, um, I have one more live BP after this, and then my first game is October 5th. So, okay. So, you, so you're spinning stuff you're throwing. Oh yeah. No, I, I, I'm throwing everything. Yes, sir. And how do you feel? I feel fantastic. Yeah. I, I don't think I've ever felt better, honestly. Great. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I feel – I mean, I put on 40 pounds since I've been in here. Yeah, I was, joking with, the other, yeah, I was joking with the other day. I had, If you needed 40 pounds, I could have gave you 40 pounds. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I had to get mine the hard way, unfortunately. <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, I feel, you know, mentally, physically, um, I just I feel – I feel fantastic, so. Well, when, when the first time I met you, the first time we talked, it was when you were uh, in Arlington as part of the, the Rangers Futures Camp. And you talked to me about how you always had trouble keeping on weight. So yeah. how did, how did you, how a, did you put it on this time and B, how are you keeping it on? I mean, I, so like when I first got into rehab, the, the whole um, like idea was for me to just throw on a bunch of weight, like as quickly as possible. Um, and that's what I did. I sat down with Stephanie and Emily and we just made a plan about how much I should be eating, you know, like eating the right stuff, obviously. Um, and just stuck to the plan finally. And just, you know, I put in all the effort and I was eating probably 6,200 calories a day. God, you, you suck. <laughs> that's like a, that's like a swimmer. That's like a swimmer. It, it, it was, it was like, seriously, like the hardest part through Is rehab he, other than I'm like sitting around doing nothing every day, but. Like I ate myself sick daily. <laughs> oh my gosh. See, I'm jealous yeah. as a guy who needs to take the 40 off 6,200 calories would be like a dream for me to be able to <laughs> yeah. eat anything I wanted. It was, it was a grind. I'll tell you that. But so was it, I mean, a lot of shakes. I mean, you, I can't imagine you're eating $6,200, 6,800 calories and steaks every day, but <laughs> I, I might've ate Chipotle out of burritos like weekly. <laughs> I was there every day, at least three times a day. And then I had shakes in between plus snacks, plus like stuff before I went to bed. It was, it was a lot. Well, what's your, what's your go-to Chipotle burrito? What's your go-to? Oh, I'm just going to get, I'm going to get double brown rice, no beans, double steak, a uh, little medium sauce, and then I'm going sour cream and cheese and I'm calling it. No guacamole? No guac, no. Guac's, no. guac's a healthy, a healthy, it's a superfood. I know, I know. Surprised yeah, Stephanie no didn't put you me. Oh, she tried. Yeah, I just <laughs> fought against it. <laughs> I just fought against it. Uh, the, the Stephanie he referenced is Stephanie Fernandez, and she's the uh, Rangers nutritionist. And, you know, she she's done stuff like this for Ricky. Uh, Joe Palumbo, um, you know, was drinking a 4,000 calorie a day shake a couple off seasons ago. And she, oh, she she's still doing it. Yeah. She also helps with, um, in Joe's case and Kyle Gibson's case, they have ulcerative colitis. So, I mean, she, she can do it all. And, and, uh, she's, you know, in this day and age when nutrition is such a big thing for players, she's, she's kind of like a, a quiet MVP. I mean, she keeps, she keeps you guys well nourished and, and, and going the right way. And Willie Calhoun, she had Willie Calhoun too with all his weight loss. Yep. Yeah. She's, she's a superhero in her own way. I'll tell you yeah, that. she really is. Okay, so uh, we're throwing ninety nine. Is that right? <laughs> yeah, we're we're you know we're back to where we left off for sure. Um, yeah, I've been getting getting you know told to calm it down a little bit, so I'm kind of throwing too hard too soon. But yeah, we're. I mean, I mean, it was ninety nine in a bullpen the other day with you know no hitter, a dummy hitter, and it was ten o'clock in the morning. So the, the blood's not flowing even. So uh, yeah, okay. <laughs> can't you know i can't can't wait for you know somebody to step in the box and just finally be able to you know 
feel the adrenaline again. So October 5th is, is during instructs, which begins here in a couple of days for everybody. Um, what, what kind of barometer do you think that'll give you? Will you, will you get be able to get a pretty good gauge on, on what your stuff is doing? Um, you know, like honestly, as many bullpens as I've thrown to, up to this point, I think it's been like almost 15, 13. And then some live VPs, like my stuff's like still there and I'm confident in it, you know, um, obviously I missed a step and, uh, I think, finally just you know putting a hitter in there it's it's showing me you know that my stuff still plays which makes me feel comfortable because uh i did blow out on a curveball which you know now i can keep throwing it there's no mental block there so mm -hmm. it's just it's just nice you know that you know my stuff's still there and i thought i might have thrown the best changeup in my life the other day and <laughs> you know it, it hurts to say this because um jordan teagues always messes with me because before i blew out i had like finally learning my change up or whatever. And I got sent to the alt site and the joke was, you know, you always had a good change up, blah, blah, blah. So I, I finally, like, it's finally such a comfort pitch for me now. And I threw one the other day and it was, it was a 0.1 vert and 13 inches horizontal. It was completely Ooh. sideways. And I took a picture <laughs> of it and I, I, I sent it to him. And I was like, I still got a good change up. And he's like, yeah, see, that's your best pitch still. So, <laughs> right, so you go for your rep repertoire from what you're most comfortable yeah. with, the least comfortable with. That was my question. I want to know what yeah. is, what's the arsenal? Yeah. I mean, I mean, obviously, you know, still my fastball still plays. I'm uh, getting about like 22 inches of art with it right now. So, I mean, it's back to where it was. It was a long road to, you know, finally find that arm slot and the hand path again, but you know, fastball, still good. Curveball, I mean, even sharper and better now. Change up, I, I don't even – I'm just so satisfied with that at this point. And then um, still working on a slider. Um, it's coming into the mix. It feels good flying out of my hand. So mm. we're, we're slowly working there. But, I mean, other than that, everything feels really good right now. So, so slider, not a, not a cutter. You like, you like a slider a little better. Yeah. It's, it's just, I think it's, it's easier for me to get to a slider, you know, point out of my arm slot than it is cutter. Um, and just cause I throw so hard, it, it mm -hmm. blends well with my curveball. So. All right. Well, great. So how, much, how much drop off yeah. do you get up on the changeup? So, I mean, how, how many, what's the velo on the changeup compared to the, to the fastball? It was like, uh, I think I was sitting the change up the other day. It was like 84, 85. So it was from like 96, 97, 85. Wow. So about good. 12, 12. That'll work. Yeah. It's, yeah. It play, it plays. I'll tell you that. <laughs> that'll, that'll play. <laughs> it'll play. <laughs> so um, we had uh, Cole Reagans on uh, our, our last episode and he's, he went through what you went through twice. Uh, yeah. But, but I, th I think one of the, the guys who's been instrumental uh, has been Keith Comstock. Can you talk about uh, what it's like being there with Keith and how he's helped you along? You know, Com me and Kami actually sat down and talked to him, you know, about it the other day. And uh, he gave me a good quote. And he said, uh, uh, for rehab, you'll always stand by. He said, don't bring more negative energy to rehab. And I was sitting there, I was thinking, I was like, you know, like, what does he honestly mean by that? And like, obviously the rehab situation, you know, being nobody wants to be in rehab. Um. So he always, you know, brings a positive attitude. He always brings such a life to the rehab group. And he just, he makes it, you know, less crappier than the situation, you know, could tr truly be. And he always gives you something to work on. He challenges you every day. He's just like, if, if you know, somebody could ever have a mentor in their life, not going through baseball, like I'd pick that guy any, any, day, of the, any day of the week. Just, uh, I mean, he's just been there. He's been through it. He's, he's seen it all and he's just, he knows what he's talking about. Yeah. I, 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 I've never heard a rehab guy say anything bad about him. And it is the positivity thing because like Cole said, there are going to be days when you don't want to be there, but there's somebody there who's going to pick you up. And yeah. uh, you know, it, it's a big, unfortunately it can be a big group. So, but I mean, these are probably guys you're going to be friends with for forever. Yeah. And, the, you know, the Kami and I were talking yesterday and he said that, you know, that there's going to be a difference between, you know, you and being in red and you being in blue. And he said, the only difference is the 
because you you know you don't really get that close with anybody as you know having a year to just be with that person every single day in rehab so he said that'll probably be uh one big change for you not having a gel like you have with rehab but i mean it's such a good group i mean we were so close everybody was so close um it just made made the days go by quicker i was telling Kami yesterday i felt like i was sitting in a brace still today today was actually my anniversary my year was today so happy anniversary yeah <laughs> thanks <man. laughs> thanks yeah so yeah i had brought brought donuts for all rehab today it's a little rehab tradition and yeah today was the the year so all right that's awesome. Hey, let me ask you this. I, this is a question that, that now's the time to ask. You're, you're, you are finally off of IR. You're, you're healthy again. You feel good. After the surgery, when, how long is it before you actually pick up a ball and throw it? Uh, it's six months post-surgery. Post-surgery. So those, yeah, so six months. So you get six weeks until you get the brace off post-surgery, and then six months until you start you know, throwing a baseball. Oh, my gosh. And for a pitcher, that had to drive you crazy. Yeah, for, you know, something that we do all our life and it's our job. You can't pick it up for six months. It's it's tough. I mean, I tell you what, it's not easy going through rehab, but it'll be a blessing, you know, I'll always remember on my career, that's for sure. sure. When you, and you start out with like one pound weights, right? Yeah, oh yeah. No, I was, you know, we were, I was, what was I doing? I was curling like three pound dumbbells in the training room. And it was just like, you know, it's, you sit there and you think, oh, three, three pounds, you know, having surgery, you know, with that new UCL, I'll tell you what, I was never so sore after curling three pounds in my life. <laughs> that was the heaviest thing to me. It's heavy to me. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a grind. And then I, we had the, we had uh, ankle weights hung. I had ankle weights hung from my wrist one day because my arm went straight now. That was <laughs> <laughs> the most I, I thought I tore my UCL again. It was the most miserable thing I've ever been through. That sounds like dark age medicine, right? Yeah, it, it was <laughs> it's not it's not fun. That's pretty good. All right. So so um we, we've gone through the weight, we've gone through the velocity, the arsenal. I mean, it sounds like you're ready to go. And I I'm itching. I've been itching since I got done uh, for done with my uh um bullpens i've been itching for a battery to just step in the box i've been having a blast since i got done it's been nothing but fun now man i just you know you 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 rehab you just you find something you can look forward to that gets you through the week each week you find that new thing and then you finally you know you get to that end of the, the tunnel and you see the light and it's just like you know what like it's finally time to go like you finally get let go so i can finally see the light again we're almost there so Good. So, Good. so I'm, I'm assuming, have they told you any kind of pitch count? Because they're obviously not just going to let you go out. Yeah. Have they said, you know, we're going to keep you 20 pitches, 30 pitches, something like that? So uh, I'm supposed to get um, 10 innings in instructs. They're two inning stents a piece, so it'd be five innings roughly. Uh -huh. And then um, I think I'm on like a 25-ish pitch count. I, I haven't been told that, but I would assume so. And that's fine. That's you're building back up. You got to build back right. up the strength to doing that. So I even imagine going into the uh, spring next year and starting the season in in full ball again. When you're back in ball, you're they're they're gonna they're gonna be watching it closely. That's too valuable. Yeah, we talked. Uh, we talked when Meister was here and they did uh, my assessment. He says I'm looking for like 90, even like 100 innings next year, 95 almost. So okay. So I'm getting capped already next year. So yeah. Well, I mean that's what I mean, Colton. Cole Wynn, who was not injured, is is going to be at about a was it about ninety innings this year? So I mean, it's right. It's part of the part of the deal, oh, right? Yeah. Oh yeah. Good. So what? Uh, after instructs, you go home to Florida and and hang out and go through a, a normal off season. Uh, I'm gonna have a normal off season this year. Uh, I might actually I might either stay here or I'm gonna try to go out to Texas and um, stay with Sam and hopefully work out at the facility out there. Hopefully be out at TMI for a little bit, but um, obviously I got to talk through some things with some higher up people than me. So, <laughs> but that, that's, that's what the goal I'm shooting for right now. So I tell you what the TMI, yeah, you know, you know it unfortunately, but across the street is a, is a large hospital. 
TMI used to be in there and it used to be tiny and cramped. And then Keith and his partners built this nice state of the art facility. So, I mean, you, you, yeah. you hurt your elbow at a good time, I guess, but it, <laughs> it that, I mean, it's, it's a, it's a great facility. Yeah. I went over it. I, I had the hospital get my MRI done. Cause that's, that's where we still go. So. And, oh, I've been uh, in that, I've been in that machine. I've been in that one. Yeah. For, for I bad. Think, <laughs> it sounds like just bombs going off in there. It's terrible. Did they give you the, the headphones to put on? Did, did they? Give oh you yeah, the, the 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 little uh, skull candy earbuds that <laughs> just can't hear the music over in the thing. Yeah, they right. gave me those. Yeah, yeah. No, it's it's ridiculous. But hey, we'll, hey we got to do. What we got to do. Hey, we got That's one. Right. We got one listener that wanted to ask a question. This is Scott Walker, and I put it out. So anybody want to ask you a question? He said, "How difficult has it been to watch all of the other prospects get so much acclaim?" <laughs> excuse me, as the system strengthens, but you hardly get mentioned as part of the strength of the farm system due to the injury. I mean, like, personally for me, like, obviously, like, that doesn't bother me a bit. Um, just because, you know, those guys are really my teammates one day and sitting in rehab, like, I know that at the end of the day, like, I want to have, like, obviously I want to be, you know, everybody loves a little recognition, but at the end of the day, sometimes it's, it's good to sit back and, you know, see other people succeed and, you know, watch those guys like Snyder. He was in rehab with me when I started and mm-hmm. I got to watch him get to the big leagues this year. Like, you know, that's, that's nothing for me, but satisfaction. Like I love that dude to death. You know what I mean? And it's not so much, you know, sitting back and not being recognized, but it's sitting back and, you know, watching those guys that, you know, were in my draft class and, you know, get that call up and seeing that light, like, you know, that could be me one day, you know, that, that could be me next year. It could be me the, the year after. It just, uh, you know, it's just motivation, honestly. And, you know, they, they might not have said or mentioned my name a lot in rehab and I honestly don't care just, you know, cause the important people like Mike and all them, they always called me, they checked up on me, you know, so it gave me that that little satisfaction, you know, that I needed just to get through. So it was nice. For the record, you're you're in case people don't know. I mean, you're you're in the top thirty lists of you know the major publications. You're top twenty, top fifteen. So it's not like you're just you know wallowing in the bottom hundred or whatever. But you, it's just you know you you get hurt and it's kind of like out of sight, out of mind type of thing and. uh I, I think exactly. I I I certainly think, like you mentioned, the the organization knows who you are, and and that's right. what. Oh right. yeah, and that, that yeah. Go ahead. Well, see, and and I think when when I first read this question, I kind of went, "Well, what's he?" Then I understood what he said because, er, look, Jeff and I both we've talked to Paul Kruger here uh, a, a couple weeks ago. Uh, he he talked to Willie Calhoun. The name Ricky Venasco is. What you're doing there, people are saying, okay, Ricky's back. He here he comes. Because we had heard your name before the injury happened. I think his deal was it's you haven't yeah, every, everybody else is getting pressed because they're throwing, they're playing, they're doing it, and Ricky's not. How hard is that? I can't and you answered it perfectly. It's kind of yeah, I mean, it stinks because I'm yeah. not I'm not facing anyone right now. So my name's not being mentioned on a stat line or a stat sheet. That's right. kind of what I think he was trying to get at. Right. Yeah. And you and you know. I got recognized, you know, in, in my own way in rehab, that, that was the satisfaction for me, like put, being calm, you know, put me in that leadership role, you know, that, that being recognized from, you know, Paul, from Mike, from all those guys, like that's, that was the only satisfaction I need, you know, I didn't, I didn't need anything tweeted out, you know, I don't need stuff like that, but I, I mean, I, obviously at the end of the day, you know, it's nice, but you know, seeing that, you know, I can go into rehab and I can put a smile on a guy's face, you know, when he's having a bad day. You know, that was the only satisfaction I needed while I was hurt. So, yeah, those guys aren't big tweeters, by the way. They, I think they have. Bur- yeah, they're, they're not. <laughs> I think they have burners, though. I think they have burners because they always seem yeah. to know when I tweet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's all I'm gonna. I, you know, I'm pretty sure they've got burners. <laughs> yeah. So, John, what you got? 
that's it. You know what, Ricky, you came on. I, I appreciate it so much. I knew I could get you on. I reached out to you last week. We were supposed to get someone on. I said, you know, Ricky, probably come on. You were ready. And then uh, I was like, let's do it this week. It's great. I mean, I, I had to tap the brakes to get ready. I wanted you to be back throwing. Here's some good things before we did. Last year, we had talked right on the day you got diagnosed. And so uh, I wanted to, and, and everybody's like, yeah, go talk to him. He sounds good and everything's going well. It's great to get you to come on here and talk to us. Look, you Everybody, when they look at pitching prospects in this organization, the top two names right now are lighter and win. They always talk about that. But there are guys behind the scenes that are saying, uh, there's a guy named Ricky Venasco that might be right in that, that conversation who might, he could even be the best one here. That's what I've heard behind closed doors. So, you know what? It's good that you're healthy, buddy. And I appreciate you coming on here so much. I appreciate you guys having me. You know, it's always always a pleasure. You know, we went through it last year. We got yelled by yelled at by Mike together. So, you know, it was it was awesome. So, I mean, you know, I'm. Mean, it's always a pleasure being on with you guys. So, awesome. All right, hey man, if you get into town, if you do come in this off season or whatever, give me a holler, man. I'll come over and take you guys out for a meal or something. You just gotta let me know if you're in town. Yes, sir. I will absolutely. That's Ricky Sweet. Venasco. Jeff, anything else? No. Sweet, All right, buddy. All right, Jeff. Thanks. All right. All right, Ricky. Thanks for joining us. Ricky Venasco, right-handed pitcher for the Texas Rangers.